Notice how much lower this, this shoulder is. The scapula, and there it goes. Wow. Good. Oh. <laughs> that was a big pop. Yeah, that was a big pop. Yeah. And it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. So we have Kevin here today, and he found me through the video that I posted a couple of days ago from Shama, yeah, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. And Shama uh, is this, well, he, he advertises himself or plugs himself as a white guy that speaks really good Mandarin, Definitely, right? Yeah. But he also, what other dialect does he speak? He speaks Fujianese, and yeah. I'm actually Fujianese myself, so yeah. I, I definitely understand his language and yeah. connect with him. So yeah. it's not bad. So he is, uh, he's got... Uh, Chama has, and it's Chama NYC, like for New York City, he's got 3.93 million subscribers and he called me up and wanted to collaborate and I just put up that video recently, but you found that. And yeah, that's what that's suggested. Yeah. yeah, so he's, um, uh, you just got out of college, right? Mm -hmm. And play a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. um, his shoulder, and let's see if we can see it this one, the left one's higher than the right, so this one's a little lower. and. You know, it's one one way to see it is just take a take a peek straight on. But the other thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the scapula, mm -hmm. and we're going to have you pop your shirt off. So you're going to stand and face the wall right here, okay. and and that way you're not like too exposed. But I'm going to have you lift your shirt off, and you can just hand it to me so you're not on camera totally. And here I'll take it for a moment and stand right about there, and notice how much lower this this shoulder is. So my right finger, if I drew it a line across, and here's the left, and it's a big difference. You guys see that? And shoot from straight on so you can see it. Okay. So it's no joke. It's, it's that shoulder is off. So now I'm going to have you lie on your back, okay. and I'm going to do something for that, okay? And scoot down towards me. So this is where I'm going to take the scapula and set it. So I trap the elbow here, I get my hand under and, and preset the scapula, and there it goes. Wow, okay, that was a big one. Yeah. All right, so now let me release the neck a little bit with it. Ah. All right, good, and come stand up. And go back to your spot. And the camera will come around and look again. Yeah, I feel it. And let's walk in place for a second so your body kind of shakes it out. And then stand straight. And it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. I'd love for it to be totally matched up. But the big difference, and I'm under the tip of the scapula on both sides. They're almost there. Now he's got to train these, these scaps. So um, do pretend like you're doing a lat pull down where you're holding that bar and squeezing and hold. So pretend here, let me get a pen. Let me slip behind the camera, so don't move guys. So I take a pen here and pretend he could, he might even be able to pinch it. So pinch this here, <laughs> pinch it so it doesn't fall. So this is what we need to train. We need to train controlling these scapula. You can relax it now. And go, go relax. And this time, just do a few where you roll and squeeze. So any of the exercises that bring that squeeze in mm -hmm. is going to train this. And you did hold the pen that time. Did I really? Yeah, you did. So let me get your shirt on so you don't have to be uh -huh. too exposed on camera. Here, throw your shirt on. And you could just look at me for a second while he changes. Um, whether you're doing the lat pull down, you're doing rows, you're doing um, you know, a one arm row, you want to bring those elbows back and squeeze the scapula together. And any of that type of work is going to really benefit. Okay. You can also just do um, band work where you take some type of uh, TheraBand. Mm -hmm. And the thing with something like this is, is it's lighter as heavy as you want because really you're doing the contraction, right? So the palms are up and you're squeezing and really pinching that pen. The pen, you'll be 
um, visualizing in your back, yeah. like someone's not gonna really uh -huh. hold a pen, but you're pretending there's a pen back there and you're squeezing. So whether you're doing a pull down and squeezing, a row and you're squeezing, or just learning how to hold your shoulder blades that way, that'll rehab that over the next couple of weeks mm -hmm. And you can put that into all your exercise. Okay. Even if you were doing a push-up, you would squeeze through the whole motion of the push-up. Sure. You would push the push-up out, come back, flex, yeah, squeeze it. and squeeze, 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 yeah. and learn how to stabilize those shoulder blades, and that'll get better really fast. But we've already balanced it quite a bit. So now I'm going to just have you lay um, face up, actually. I'm going to be turned face up. So the other side I didn't get yet, so I'm going to now release the left side of the neck. Okay, so come in really close for this so you can see. So we adjusted the right but not the left. Oh, and there it is. So that was a big wash up. Good. Now scoot down this way. We're going to do a little bit more. Now I'm going to come back into the shoulder blades. Remember, I just did the right side, so now I'm going to do both shoulder blades together. And there's one there. So that was a little. That was right at T6, the uh -huh. sixth thoracic vertebra. We have seven in her neck, 12 in her thoracics, and five lumbars. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to go a little lower. I'm going to go down to T10 and 11. Uh, and actually, I got three. I got 10, yeah, 11, and 12. Yeah. All went together. Um, now I'm going to go to a little lower, go to his feet and ankle and hip. That one didn't pop, but I got a good stretch on it, so I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to have you lie on your side facing this way, please. Like this. Pull this knee up. This one goes straight. All right, I'm going to go right into there. Big breath in and blow it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. That was huge. That was huge, yeah. How'd that feel? Felt oh, great. Good. So come to the other side. That was bigger than I thought it was going to be. You needed that one. I did need that one. <laughs> that, was, that was a big pop. Yeah, it was a big pop. Yeah. So now stand up over here, and I'm gonna um, face me, and I'm gonna look at your wrist. So we're gonna start on this side. This is the side that bothers you, right? Yeah, the left. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna um, start on your good side. Mm -hmm. And here you can turn this way a little bit. So remember, this is his side with no pain. I like that side. Let's see this side. And this is where, where do you feel pain sometimes? Here. On the outer. In the, yeah. Uh, In the side there. There's one. There's one, yeah. There's another. Mm -hmm. a little bit. Trap your arm. Let it hang. Mm. It's right. moving well. Is I think you have a little tendonitis in there. I think it is tendon. It's a yeah. tendon thing, right? Yeah, because this feels inflamed in there. And it's moving well. So I got it to pop a little bit and loosen up. Mm -hmm. But this area has great mobility. Feel it. You can squeeze it and move it. Mm -hmm. So this bone moves. Yeah. Is that supposed to be but, moving? Yes, it, it should. It, but oh. yours is inflamed. So it's not in pain because it's stuck and locked. Mm -hmm. It's in pain because it's almost like a little sprained. 
Yeah. And you probably did it either weightlifting. Yeah, it was weightlifting, yeah. Um, well, there you go. He, he did a weightlifting. <laughs> I was going to give you some options. Yeah, no, but you got I got it, it right on the first, on the go, first yeah. go. The other way people do that sometimes is push ups. Push ups, yeah, definitely. But again, it's the, almost a similar thing from weightlifting because in weightlifting, especially if your arms go wide for an exercise, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're cranking the outer aspect yeah. of the wrist. Like, uh, for example, a snatch mm -hmm. or uh, like an overhead. Um, yeah, like an overhead it was squat, heavy, and then I was dropping it, and it just snapped out. Of yeah, place. so and then it just kind of you probably sprained that. Uh, All right. Yeah. What would, what would you say? If um, you this, well, this I think you what you should do because you're gonna probably want to continue lifting is I would put some type of wrap on that, okay. either you know one that wraps around it, mm -hmm. um, and what's always good when you do wrist stuff is make this with your hand, and so that makes you wrap this up tight. So you almost get like a little cleavage right here, uh -huh. a little butt cheeks. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so then when you let go, it's still being squeezed. Because people make the mistake and put their wrist guard yeah. down here, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything, doesn't do anything yeah. because the wrist has mobility. You're trying to take away some of the mobility with stabilization. And to get that, you squeeze, wrap the thing on, and then let go. Mm -hmm. And now you have really strong, because you're covering the joint. That makes sense, yeah. Um, that could be really nice for you while you're getting better. Okay. And then also um, keep your wrists as straight as possible. Okay. So even if you were doing um, push-ups, if you had bars, that would be better, like parallel bars yeah, straight, or easy. little push-up bars. And another idea that you can do for push-ups is, um, here, I'll show you this if you can see it. But you would have like a little towel. and But you're going to put the edge of the towel under your palm. Mm -hmm. And what that does is it creates a dome. And it doesn't allow your hand to go flat and then 90 degrees. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah. So if I'm doing push-ups, I'm here, that's uh -huh. a lot of wrist strain. My wrists don't hurt and I can do push-ups, no problem. But if I had wrist strain, I'd at least want to get this up a little higher. so that my hand's domed, like mm -hmm. a dome. Mm -hmm. my, and then you can do it on both sides, but you really just need to do it on the pain side. And you'll find that instead of it 90, it's more like 70 degrees. Okay. And you're taking 20 to 15 degrees off that sharp angle, mm -hmm. and it's usually enough to continue to train. Okay. So that's a little idea for you there. As far as your hip goes, and I know this because he wrote it down on his form, um, you need to do more psoas stretch. Psoas stretches. And you should do them all the time. So the psoas stretch in here, you can maybe see it from here, is you take a big, big lunge with your knee behind you, mm -hmm. and then you reach up. And so you're getting this part here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people make the mistake in there, they don't have enough of a lunge. Okay. So it's almost a front split. Yeah. Right? But you're here, push the hip under, okay. and reach up. Now, some people like to do it in midair, you know, so some people will pick up the whole hip. That works. Okay. I just like to put my knee down. That sounds good. And some people will reach back and grab this leg. Um, but for me, I can get a lot of stretch out of just doing it the classic way. Okay. So here, try to get into that position now. For now, uh, let's just leave that leg behind. And then, yeah, you let your back foot relax. So the foot's not like this, it's relaxed. And you can stabilize on the wall if you want. Good, and you're squared up. Mm -hmm. And sink even lower. And you're doing, may I touch the yeah, edge of your leg? Right so you're just getting right there. Okay. And you want to hold these stretches for like at least a minute on each side. If you can't do a minute, work up to a minute. Okay. I'll hold them for two minutes on the yeah. other side. Okay. But the more you stretch that inner spot, the uh, psoas muscle, mm -hmm. um, the more you're going to have room. So what he was feeling is he gets pinched here sometimes. Yeah. It hurts all the time. And we need to lengthen that. But, you know, we sit too much. Yeah. So everybody's sitting, so these shorten all the time. Uh -huh. And athletically, we need the hip flexor to be flexible and strong. Yeah. It's usually plenty strong, but it needs more flexibility. Okay. Because every sport, we lift that leg, right? Yeah. Or we, we turn a hip, or we hit a baseball, or uh -huh. we hit a tennis ball, yeah. or we punch, mm -hmm. or we strike if we're in martial arts. If you're a dancer, you're leaping. Basketball players are lifting that knee up to, to go up high, right? Mm -hmm. And that's hip flexor. Got it. So the hip flexor needs to be usually lengthened. Mm -hmm. um, and for most guys like you, you're probably strong enough already there. It's, it's the flexibility that's causing the pain yeah. or lack thereof. I think it's the lack of flexibility. Yeah. All right, cool. So I think we're done, right? Yeah. Is there another one?
No. Uh, All right. That's it. Yeah. All right. Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Yeah, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better.